David Feldstein. I'm in the Department of Medicine, um, uh, actually in general internal medicine. So I'm a clinician, researcher, educator. I kind of try to do a little bit of everything. It keeps me, uh, I guess, keeps me from being bored. Yu Yan Chang, who is our uh, course administrator for senior therapeutics and has been for as long as I've been doing the course, is actually the reason why we're even using Collaborate. Uh, and, and we'll talk about how she has uh, managed to, to get things going correctly. And right now we're actually in a very good place with Collaborate, as you'll see in a minute. So uh, to understand why we chose Collaborate, first you need to understand a little bit about our course. Our course is called Clinical Therapeutics. And the goal of our course is to provide students with the tools to treat the common diseases that they'll see in their residency. So this is a fourth year student elective and medical school is four years, so they have a little senioritis as well. <laughs> uh, th th this course has an incredibly long history, so it's actually, best we can tell, 20 years, probably longer that it's been around. Everyone we talked to who went to uh, UW Medical School, my colleagues who are, are older than myself, remember the course, so we're not sure quite how old, but it's been around a long time. And at one point, 75% of the medical school class used to take this elective, so probably the most popular elective in the entire medical school. But by 2011, they were down to 15 students only. So they went from you know, 120 or so down to 15. Uh, so what happened? Well, we'll talk about the problems of why that might have happened. But a decision was made, and this was before I got involved, was to move it entirely to distance ed. And so in 2012, which is when I got involved, the, all the recorded lectures from 2011 were put online and bam, there you have an online course. We'll talk about how maybe you don't. But uh, there are 70 different topics across uh, many specialties and that is our course. So what was the problem? The problem is fourth year medical students, of course. No, the problem <laughs> is that for fourth year medical students, they're traveling a lot. So they do their elective, uh, I should say, they do their uh, interviews for residency. They're doing that during their fourth year. They also do um, what they call um, audition electives at other schools. So if I want to do a residency at a certain place, I'll go there and do an elective and then get a good letter of recommendation. That looks much better to their residency program so I can get in. So they're traveling a lot. And so they need some distance alternatives. It turns out we had virtually none in our medical school. Uh, we still only have a few. What's another problem? I, I saw the looks from everyone, and it was a, my same feeling as well. You can't just stick everything online and say you've got a course. It doesn't work like that. We know passive learning really doesn't have too much of an impact. And we didn't even know, you know, we know they watched it at, at least one and a half times speed, if not faster. Uh, but we didn't even know if they were watching it at all. They, could just turn it on and, and walk away and we'd have no idea. So we got around part of that in other ways which are, are not part of this lecture, but part of what we used was Blackboard Collaborate. So what were our goals? We wanted to provide more active learning for our students, obviously. We wanted to increase our faculty-student interaction as well. Um, so what we found out in that first year, why do we teach as faculty? We love that interaction with the students and so when you record it and then the students watch it later, you don't have that interaction. And so the faculty you know, were, weren't, as, um, weren't as enthused about the course. And the students, obviously, part of it is to get that interaction with the faculty. But one of the things is we had to have it entirely um, distance-based. So what, what they've done in different areas in, in the medical school, sometimes they have a day where everyone comes back and meets together as a group. Well, we, could, we couldn't do that, basically. Our students were all over the place, and they were doing things at different times. Um, and many of them were doing it while they were out interviewing. You know, we, uh, we found out that the internet connections in most hotels are not that great. Um, so, so that wouldn't work. So what do we do? So really, how do you flip the classroom when there is no classroom? And that's where Blackboard Collaborate came in. So one of the things we decided to do I can't remember what year we decided to do this, but uh, was to do topic-based web conferences. And we talked a little bit about how, how we would bring the students together to discuss these topics. And Yu Yen, I don't remember, how did you find out about Blackboard Collaborate? Um, I went to Adobe Connect sessions, and I think we were facing out some kind of project on that. Yeah. 
So Yugen was out searching for different um, technologies to meet our needs and came across Blackboard Collaborate, which uh, we're thankful for. So what we do here is we have the students watch that pre-recorded lecture of that faculty member and then come to the web conference. And the faculty leads a case-based conference. So here's a picture of Blackboard Collaborate, a couple things um, to notice. So this is your whiteboard in the middle. Uh, I'll show you another screenshot where we have the whiteboard filled. Uh, you can talk and show video. The list of the participants is here. You can raise your hand. And some of these I'm hoping you'll be doing in the interactive session. Uh, you can also chat. We just use that pretty much for problems. And this is, so this is actually a, a screenshot of our recorded session that we did on Tuesday. Um, the, the, why well, I showed the other one first is we, you lose all the bars when you watch it recorded. Uh, so this is where we use the whiteboard. We often use it for just showing PowerPoint. That's probably the most common way that we use it. Uh, you can also do screen sharing, uh, which we did for a, a tour of the course website as well. So the web conference, so the faculty, typically what happens is the faculty take a slide or two to go over the main concepts from that recorded lecture, but they don't go over most of the material. So the idea is that this is building on what they already know. The faculty present a case with questions for the students to discuss, and then we stu send the students to the breakout room, which is what's great about Blackboard Collaborate. Most of the others don't have breakout rooms. Uh, the after the students discuss it, we set a timer, it goes off, and then we bring them back to the large group and review those answers. And we usually have about three to four cases per session. So here's just a brief demo. This is Mary Pack, um, who actually gave me permission to, uh, to use her video uh, from her uh, web conference on cost of care. And so you'll see Mary at this point is uh, giving them the question and sending them and then we send them to the breakout so rooms. Um, these are some of the questions or the things to, um, to think about. So just looking at the bill, um, it's, it's, and it's the bill for scenario one, um, you can piece together what the inpatient treatment was and then think about um, some of the questions. So you know, what's the most surprising thing in the bill? Do um, you think that this level of care, so admission to a hospital was the appropriate um, level of care or, or the uh, appropriate treatment, um, just looking at the bill and the bill and the medical record and the documentation and such are, are part of this. Uh, and then can you think of uh, anything you would have done to So those are just some of those questions to think about during this first um, activity. And then, and then you'll notice okay. I come on to give instructions. So, uh, One of the things we learned is that, is that it's critical to give them instructions about what they should be doing in the breakout room. And also uh, remember that when you get into the room, you need to uh, check the talk or click on the uh, microphone, the talk bar, to be able to talk to each other. So uh, don't forget to do that. If you want to show your video, you can do that as well. So you can do those six videos in the room. Okay. So everyone should be able to see each other, and we'll be in groups of five or six. And don't forget to remember which room you are in. Okay, you can send us send you out to your rooms, and then we'll set a timer in a little bit. And uh, after it meets, we'll call you back. And remember, you have on a handout we sent to you the scenario, questions, as well as the bill. And it should be labeled on the top, which one is for scenario one, which one is for scenario two, and which is for scenario three. Okay, great. You can send us send you out to your rooms now. So, so we learned also to make sure that we send them as part of the session. You can see I'm just scrolling. We sent them to different rooms. Now we call them back. So we'll start with group six. Um, oh, five. Yeah, five. Mar Mary so couldn't count. We have uh, <laughs> five groups. Um, so I think the representatives. What did you find was the most surprising item on the bill? Uh, I just was surprised by how much the uh, IV day cost. Because regular staring and so you'll notice we had, so there are a lot of things there that we have learned that we did right, that we didn't do right initially. I'll talk a, more about them in detail later. But one of the things is assigning someone within each group to be the spokesperson. Otherwise, we had a lot of dead time. Um, and calling on a group, saying group five, rather than saying, does anyone have thoughts about? 
Uh, because unlike in a classroom where you can look at people and then they feel uncomfortable and talk, <laughs> we've all done that, right? <laughs> it's like if you look at someone long, they're like, okay, I'll say something. But you can't do that, obviously, in a web conference, and you don't know where people are or what they're doing. Um, and we didn't want to call on individuals because, in fact, we didn't know if they were paying attention. They might even be having uh, problems with their, with their video. But, but in this case, we tell them, you're in a group. You're going to have to report out. You choose someone who's going to talk for your group, and then we felt comfortable calling on those people. Yeah, absolutely. Could, which parts of that, were all parts of that live when you did this? There yeah, were two we, instructors who were live as well. Yep, we do everything live, and I'll talk about the support we use. That's one of the other things we learned early on, is that especially our bigger ones have about 60 people. You can't have someone give a, you know, run a good session and deal with all of the other issues at the same time with 60 people, because people get kicked out, and you have to put them back in their rooms. And, and so, um, so that's something we learned early on, is you really need someone to help, you know, if you're four or five people, it's probably fine. But when you get to a lot of people, someone has a problem at some point. So um, that way the extra person can take care of that. So we started with a trial of two web conferences in 2012, and I have to say they actually didn't go very well at all. <laughs> um, but we, we persevered. We saw that, that we could do better. Um, the, the issues are actually too numerous to state of the problems we had. I'll talk about <laughs> some of the things we learned afterwards. Uh, now we have seven web conferences a year. We have 25 to 60 students in each of the web conferences. And we also do a web conference, which we just did this past uh, Tuesday, and we're doing another on Monday, because uh, we have 120 students in the class now. So we do a, a web conference orientation, and that's made a big difference as well. Some results. So we actually have students evaluate after every single session for the entire course that we, we can give feedback to inst our instructors as well as helps us improve the course. Here uh, we ask the students, so this is based on all of the web conferences from last year. You can see 255 responses. We ask the students um, to, to rate the statement, the web conference enhanced my understanding of the material. You can see 75% said that they strongly agreed, 24% said they agreed. You can get 75% of your medical students to say they strongly agree about anything. That's, <laughs> a, that's pretty impressive. And only one disagree, one percent disagreed. So there's a couple students disagreed. So, so we're very happy with that. Well, what's the other issue? Can they use it? So the other statement says the software is easy to use. You can see, almost seventy percent strongly agree with that. So again, we're pretty happy with that. Twenty-seven percent agree and four percent disagree. I think there was actually one student in there for strongly disagree. Didn't come out as a percent. So this is this is after all of the conferences are over. You said looking back on all. No. Of the at the end of each conference, we ask so them. So even after the first conference, so there's only really one person who said that they strongly disagree. Yeah. So that's what I was going to say. What we've noticed over the last two years, at least, is this, this question in particular changes over time. So with the first web conference, we get more in the agree to disagree range. And then as it goes on, by the last web conference, it was almost all strongly agree. Now, they don't have to attend all seven of the web conferences. They have to attend anywhere between one and three, and some students choose to attend more. So, um, so but, but we definitely see a change over the course of the year. So the first one, you might have a little problems. By the second one, you're kind of into it, and it's not a problem at all. So this is including even those first ones. Yep. Any other questions? So what have we learned? Well, preparation is everything. Preparing the faculty. So that was probably our biggest issue the first year was we didn't prepare the faculty well enough. They would send the students to the groups. It wasn't clear exactly what the students were supposed to do. The questions were either too easy that they could answer in you know, 10 seconds and didn't really need to discuss, or they were too hard where they didn't have the basics to be able to discuss them at all. And so it didn't work very well. So educating the faculty, we actually, I personally go over all the faculty's uh, questions and then make comments and say, well, maybe you might want to cut it down. You know, they'll ask them 30 questions in a two-minute period. Obviously, they can't do that. We give the students five minutes, UN, typically, about five minutes um, to answer the questions before we bring them back. From the student standpoint, now when I look back at it, I can't believe we did this. But what we did is um, we did like a mini orientation at the beginning of each one because we had no main orientation. So each time, we had to make sure people understood how to use Blackboard Collaborate. So that took time away from the material. The people who had already done it, it was a waste of time. They already had done it. But we didn't know for each individual student whether they'd ever been at one before. So 
So we felt like we had to do it for each one. So by the orientation which we do now via Blackboard Collaborate, we know that everyone can use it. In the orientation, we send them to breakout rooms and have them talk and make sure everything works. If it doesn't work, then you can help them out either at that time or offline. And when we come to that first web conference, everyone's used it already and everyone's comfortable with it. So that's made a huge impact. Uh, UEN also has opened up a, <coughs> we call it a playground, a tech support playground, so that if anyone is having problems, they can go in and just mess around with Blackboard Collaborate. So we have a session that's open during the entire course that people can just go in and mess around, and UEN can meet them there and help them if they're having problems. And that's the one that is unimportant, right? Mm -hmm. Time management is a huge issue. The first time we were lucky to get through two cases. That's obviously not enough material to, for the students. Some of the things we learned was to tell the groups that you, you know, you're going to need to uh, come, come back and be ready to talk and then to call on the groups. That saves a lot of time. Uh, we also, again, helped the faculty uh, kind of tailor their talks to understand they had never done this before. So they didn't have any sense of how long it would take. So we helped them with that as well. What, what was mentioned before, that extra facilitator. So we actually have two people because I, myself, or um, Tom Schiffler, who's our, our co-director for the course, goes to each web conference as just an extra person to kind of introduce the faculty and get things rolling. And then we have Yuyen who actually makes sure that the students go to their groups, that the uh, timer gets set when they are in their groups so that they know when to come. Well, we bring them back, but at least they know when they're going to come back. Uh, and any students that get kicked out of problems, she's able to help with. So I can't imagine doing it without someone extra to, to be there to help. You can do it with two people because that's how we do the orientation, but you really need that extra person. We, as was mentioned in the video, we push the cases out now. So originally we just had the cases, when you're in your small group, you can see the whiteboard. Um, you can push the whiteboard out to the small groups. but half the time it didn't work right or sometimes we forgot to push the whiteboard and we brought them back and they're like, well, I couldn't remember what the questions were. And we said, oops. <laughs> so now we send it out, we push, which I think we're going to try doing pushing files today via Blackboard Collaborate. You can actually push them out via the tool to all the students and then they can download them. You know that they have them right in front of them. Um, where is there room for improvement? So we, we have lots of room for improvement in how we run our sessions exactly, but from a Blackboard Collaborate standpoint, I didn't think you were interested in, in how we could improve what we're doing, but from Blackboard, the poor connection is, is a problem. So as I said, students are all over the place. They're in hotels, they're in airports sometimes. And when you have a poor connection, they tend to get dropped. And when they get dropped, they don't go back to that breakout room. They go back to the main room. So whenever students are in the breakout room, we have to be watching the main room and send them back to their room. Initially, this was a problem because we didn't know what room to send them back to. And that's why we said, I don't know if you noticed, I said, remember to check what room you're in. So once they know what room they're in, we can easily send them back and forth. Uh, but for the first sessions before we did that, they would come back into the main room and we honestly wouldn't know where to send them. We'd say, well, what room were you in? And they'd say, well, I'm not sure. So-and-so was in it. And that's a hard thing to look through with 60 people. The have, somebody else can correct me if I'm wrong here. You can set up the permissions so that they can go back and join a room as well, right? You, you can have them be able to switch rooms on their It'd own. Be chaotic if they right. Join the right. And, and part of the issue is why we do five to six is you can have six mics open at a time, and that way everyone can theoretically have a mic open and talk. We'll talk about that in the feedback issue in a moment. Um, so that's why we try to limit to five to six. It's also a good number to have a discussion and everyone gets a chance to talk. The nice thing is it always sends them to the same breakout room. So if it's working properly and they don't get kicked out, every time you send them to a breakout room, they go to the same breakout room. So that way we can keep the groups over time and they don't have to introduce each other each time. Okay. Um, the video, so I'm sure you noticed, the video is kind of choppy. Um, that's okay, really the point of the video is just so you can see the, the faculty member. The problem with the audio is it actually gets a little bit annoying. If it gets behind, it speeds up so everyone's pitch goes up <laughs> and they talk a little faster um, until it catches up. And that can be a little bit, a little bit annoying. Um, in the breakout room, so ideally everyone can have their mic open and they could just talk like a normal conversation. But the problem is if they're not using headsets, um, you often get feedback. And so we do recommend to all the students that they 
use a headset of some kind if they have it. Um, if not, some are better than others, but usually when you try to use the speaker and the mic from your computer, that's when we get feedback. And so if they're getting feedback, we tell them to just click off their talk bar when they're not talking. And um, you couldn't tell from that, but you can't use PowerPoint directly. So you have to upload it, and it uploads it as individual, basically kind of like a screenshot into the whiteboard. And um, so you can't use animations or anything like that. Now you can have them uh, you know, see your, your screen, but that's slow and takes time to recycle, so that doesn't work seamlessly either. So, so a little bit of an issue there. What are we planning to do? Well, one more oh, quick yeah, absolutely. Go back on the other one. Has how does video and audio work? How many of your um, participants end up using like apps either on their phone or sure, or iPad? Is that do you see a lot of that? Or yeah. So, so the the interesting thing. Let me just go back to this one. You can see. Um, so what this means, that symbol, uh -huh. is that they're using it from a tablet or an app. So you can actually see which students are on via tablet or app. What would you say, Ian, maybe, I don't know, maybe 5% if so. It's mainly from computers. I'd say maybe five people or so per session. And are, does the software work about the same on both of them? Or? So, um, so the software works a little bit differently on the app. Um, the app, well, first off, you can't do, um, what's that called again? The, yeah, the you, can't, you, you can't do the web tour on the app. Um, other than that, for the basic stuff, it seems to work okay. It sends them to the groups. All of that seems to work okay. So we tell them they can use, they can use either. So the students can't do the web tour? They can't watch a web tour? They can't watch a web tour. Now, well, they can watch. So there are two th different things here. There's a web tour where you would go to a page and they can actually click on anything and then do whatever they want from the page. But then you can just also do the screen share where they see your screen and as you go through a web page. Okay. Um, where were we? Okay. So what are our uh, future plans? So one of the issues we've struggled a little bit with is how to increase the interaction in the large group. The way we do it now, you have basically one person from each group interacting. We've talked to students about it, um, and they say, well, this is the most interaction we've had in any web conference, so they're not upset about it. But from my standpoint, I'd like to make it a little better. Um, one of the things we're trying to consider is how do we use, so they have a polling tool. I don't think we're using that effectively. It's a way, if everyone's not going to talk, it's a way of at least getting the pulse of the whole group. What's going on? What do they understand? We used it actually in that particular talk um, with Mary Pack to, to ask how many people had seen a hospital bill before. And surprisingly few medical students have ever seen a hospital bill. But that was a way of kind of putting that issue out there and, and allowing everyone to, to, dis, you know, to at least get their opinion known. So we're thinking about using that more. Where um, I have to say we're, we're actually not planning to make any big changes because the students like it and it runs pretty smoothly. So. Um, after, uh, after I, I would say failing the first year, I, I wasn't happy with how, how we did. We, we learned from it and we made these changes. And, and uh, the main thing has been the preparation, making sure that everyone is kind of ready to go.